Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Today I'm going to kind of depart a little bit from what we often discuss and touch on kind of a psychological thinking type exercise, something that I find uh, quite useful and quite interesting, especially for the types of people who we are on this channel, right? We're the types of people who uh, don't necessarily follow the conventional path and, you know, we're looking for advantages, kind of hacks in the system, etc. So I figured talking about the mental models behind that and how we can approach it. I'm going to use it within the context of investing, but I don't think that it just has to be uniquely applied to investing. I think it's broadly applicable. And this is really the subject of, you know, how to be a contrarian thinker in a way that is intelligent and effective. So hopefully you're going to find it useful. Before we get started, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Uh, would love to have you along with us on the journey. Don't want you to miss out on any of the videos, so make sure you do that. If you're at all interested in how to legally reduce your taxes to as low as possible, if you're interested in protecting yourself from lawsuits as bulletproof as possible, setting up international companies, opening bank accounts, getting alternative residencies, citizenships, please reach out to me. You can book a call, clarity.fm forward slash Michael Rosmer, there's a link below, or you can visit our website, offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com. Okay, so this comes up to me uh, as something, I. I always enjoy contrarian thinking. I have, you know, some wonderful clients and friends who are great contrarian investors. I enjoy listening to people like Peter Thiel. For me, I think you get into this situation where a lot of people exist in echo chambers today on the internet, etc. You know, they keep hearing the same things over and over because the algorithms feed them what it is that they tend to like. And I think that's a really negative thing in our world and in our lives. I think that to grow, we want to challenge our belief systems, right? So the books that I most enjoy reading are ones that give me a different perspective. And in that regard, I think it's useful to think a little bit about what I would call counter indicators, okay? So in other words, normally we have indicators in life that are supposed to tell us something. But actually, if you're a good, especially if you're a good contrary, uh, contrarian investor, it looks, it's helpful to look at that as a counter indicator. So I'm going to give you an example. You might look and you might say, hey, everybody's bullish on this asset, therefore that's bullish. Now, a contrarian investor would say, everybody's bullish on that asset, therefore that's bearish. Okay? And, you know, the underlying logic is, hey, if everyone's already piled in, if everyone's already going this way, it can't go that way anymore, right? That's, so that's how it kind of shows up within the markets. But I think there's a lot of wisdom to that in general. Certainly to play the exercise in your brain. And I'll give you an example. I was talking to somebody who I uh, uh, do, do some things with, a very good trader. And he was mentioning to me that he hears a lot of people talking about the idea that the Bitcoin uh, bull run is going to be, it's just starting and it's going to last a long time. And he was like, you know, I think the fact that everybody's saying that means it might be quick. It might be, people tend to think it's going to kind of go slowly and take a long time and, you know, it's going to play it over these. She's like, they're expecting these pullbacks along the way. He's like, I think maybe you won't see those pullbacks so much. It'll race up quite quickly, uh, but it will also die quite quickly. And to me, this was a really interesting thought. Now, whether that happens or not, we're going to find out, right? The idea, I think, of contrarian thinking and kind of challenging the status quo is not necessarily that that is the way that it is. It's more to entertain the possibility which allows us to see things coming that maybe other people would miss, that allows us to see opportunities that other people would miss, etc. right? And so that was very useful to me. Uh, another one is uh, again, I've got this, uh, this friend and client, very good, very good investor, really, really excellent at timing, very contrarian. I remember a couple of years ago, the yield curve had briefly uh, inverted and it was all over the place. People were like, oh, you know, the news was reporting, well, this is usually a sign that, you know, we're going into a recession. I think this was late 2018, if I recall correctly. And I remember my mom was talking about it. She's like, oh, we're probably going into a recession. And I mentioned something to him and he was like, you know what, everybody's talking about it. You know, so and so is saying we're going into a recession, so and so is saying it, et cetera. I don't think we're going to have a recession. And he happened to invest big uh, around the end of 2018, did exceptionally well through 2019, fantastic investments, et cetera. And you know, that was the contrarian play. 
So I think part of the idea here is that the normal social indicator is uh, that social proof is good, that the masses are right, but actually the contrarian way of thinking is often the masses are wrong. And you know, if, it's like if I find myself on the side of the majority, I want to take a look around and say, whoa, hang on a minute, why am I here? This is probably not a great thing, right? And you can kind of think of that really logically by saying, well, the majority aren't hyper performers, right? So if I want to be a hyper performer, I need to be different from the majority. That's just the way that it goes. I need to be different. I need to like differentiate myself. I need to have a different approach because if I try and do what everybody else is doing, I'm going to get probably at best the results that they're getting. I want different results, so I have to think about it differently, okay? And I find that in so many circles, people aren't like that. I think it's one of the things that's really nice about people who travel, who break out of their box and go to live in another country, who are willing to expand themselves, is that you end up in this situation where you see the world through different eyes. And it opens up new opportunities, it opens up new perspectives, it opens up, you know, just, you're richer as a person. I think the world is richer because you take that on. So anyway, basically what's the lesson here? The lesson here, I think, from my perspective is anytime you see an indicator that seems to point one direction, try challenging yourself to suggest that it may indicate the exact opposite of what you're thinking, okay? Very, very important uh, or very, very interesting concept. So when everybody is saying something, suggest that it could be the opposite of that. Does it mean it is? No. You know, to be completely opposite is, you know, really negative. The, the idea of being a contrarian thinker is not just to be different, it's to be different and to be right, you know, so you want to exercise some independent thinking. But I think that what will happen invariably, aside from expanding your thinking, and aside from, you know, when you put yourself into the contrary uh, perspective, is, hey, listen, emotionally, we have to toughen ourselves, right? Because it won't be popular. Other people are going to say, are you crazy? Okay, fair enough. But as a result, I think we grow and yeah, we're, just, we're just in a much better place. So anyway, I hope that helps. If you guys have thoughts, I'd love to hear from you. You know, how do you be a great contrarian thinker? How do you be a great uh, contrarian investor? How do you think better in general? What are some tips that you have? What are some mental models that you have for how to process the world? How have you uh, challenged yourself to grow and you know, stood out from your peers? Probably if you're watching this channel, you're somebody who has been in a situation where you're not like everybody you grew up with. You know, certainly from my hometown, I grew up in a small town of 10,000 people. You know, I didn't turn out like really any of them. And, uh, and I think that's a really good thing. So I imagine you're probably the same. Anyway, let me know in the comments. If you haven't already, like I said, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. Uh, if you didn't like the video, please tell me why in the comments. We'd love to hear the feedback. And if you're at all interested in getting help with like I said, paying the lowest legal amount of tax possible, international structuring, international tax planning, international asset protection, residencies, citizenships, hiring people overseas, international investing, etc. Please reach out to me. You can book a call at cardio.fm forward slash Michael Rosmore or check out our websites offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com. I'm going to see you guys on the next video.